star drive and neutron decay. I said most of the matter expelled by a Big Bang are neutrons. Uh, you can call those hydrogen ions, although the electron hides within. When a neutron is freed from its confinement, it is a target for gravitons and other particles. The first impact establishes its direction of rotation, which determines which quark is the down axle and which two are the ups. This one hits the pink one, making the pink and the blue up quarks, and the other one a down quark. So that's how it starts out. Neutron decay. Um, now, next, 36. What are these? Yeah, 36. Spinning around, neutron. 304. Both are spring loaded. Anything they hit or any imbalance, and one wins, pushing the other out. How many other are pushed out? A centrifugal force makes them stretch out even more. And this has to do with the average speed of the gravitons hitting it in this part of our universe. Now, this is also an imbalance, so at a certain moment, it shoots out one way or the other way. Now, so that's how a neutron decays into a proton. Not very complicated now, is it? Um, there are, of course, an electron uh, emerges and an antineutrino, and that's uh, what I'm going to talk about next. We have a spinning neutron. You see these dark green gravitons. We don't notice them. They are going at a pace of 2c. We don't notice those. Uh, something hits. I don't know why, but it out pops the electron, as shown before. Just before. So now we got this uh, neutron becoming a proton. However, there's a lot of torque inside this, in the core, so the electron goes out, has a bigger radius, so it speeds up, and it uses the energy from the core, which always gets replenished by other gravitons flying by. So it takes, absorbs energy from the ether to um, speed up this graviton and turn it into an electron. This moment is called a re boson, W boson. You can think, well, this thing is a W boson, okay, or the process is W boson. It's called W boson. This is where the first electron appears. Zero electrons. Now the one appears. It goes faster and it is in a higher orbit. Now it hits one of those surrounding gravitons, turning it also into an electron. So now this one goes fast. Now this one goes two and a half C, and this one slows a bit down. And so it still is a bit higher than two C, and, and the others are a bit lower than two C, and this creates a charge. Because, well, uh, that's a bit complicated, but since this one goes fast and this one goes slower, they interact differently with other ions, and uh, that's called charge. Well, also, the electron flying off uh, goes faster now. And normally, it has a normal speed of rotation, but since it goes faster, we notice that thing. We notice a difference in it, and that's what makes up the uh, antineutrino or gamma radiation. Um, when a gamma radiation hits another electron, uh, the, the, uh, then or a graviton, doesn't matter what, when it hits it, it stays where it was and gives the impulse to the other particle. But here is where the gamma ray stops. Um, but as we notice, uh, the neutron had weighed six uh, units before and still weighs six units. The electron is popped out. So it doesn't change anything in weight at all. Um, Yeah, well, that's about it.